Hi, welcome to How to Repair. I have a Miele washing machine here that I've already partly stripped down. The side panels are off and the front panels off. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to explain the five major functions of a washing machine. This is the fill cycle, the wash cycle, the heating cycle, the drainage cycle, and also the spin cycle. What I'm going to do is talk you through each of the components on the machine and how they're related to the cycles on the machine, and then explain what the actual parts do. This may assist you in actually diagnosing problems with your washing machine and understanding where these components are. Okay, the first component we'll talk about, because this is used on every cycle in the machine. It is the door interlock. Whenever you set a program on the washing machine, doesn't matter what it is, it needs to understand that the door is shut and safe to use. Therefore, the door senses when the catch goes into the actual door lock and then throws a pin over to lock the door. It then tells the program it is safe to operate and the machine will start. If you have a start button flashing or the machine will not start any cycle, you may have a fault on your door interlock. There is also a bimetal strip built into most door locks, which even when the power is disconnected will keep the door locked for up to two minutes. This is a safety feature that's built into the door lock. You also, on this model of machine, have an emergency pull cord. For example, if the machine had not emptied the water and had finished the cycle, the door would not open because the pressure switch would be telling the machine there is water in there. But you are able to pull the emergency cord. But the first thing you would need to do is drain the machine down so the water level is below the height of the bottom of the door. This stops your kitchen flooding. The first part of all wash cycles is the filling process. This consists of water coming from your tap through the hose to the water valve at the back of the machine. You may have multiple water valves on your washing machine. On this washing machine we have a single water valve that goes through to the soap door via a switching unit. This then on the switching unit diverts the water to whichever chamber is needed. You have the wash, you have the pre-wash, and you have the conditioner. At certain parts in the program, the water will be put into each dispenser. Then the water goes down through the machine. The water from the soap drawer continues to flow into the machine until it's told to stop. It goes through the soap drawer hose into the drum. It then goes into the base of the drum and continues filling until an electronic device called a pressure switch tells the machine what water level it's at and certain programs will be different levels of water. So let's go round the front to look at the pressure chamber and the pressure switch. The pressure chamber on this machine is at the front and it pushes through a seal into the machine and it's only actually held with compression. This is quite a large chamber and it is connected to a small pipe. And it's quite hard to film this, so I brought another one for you here off a different make of machine. The water level rises inside this chamber and compresses the air, which then goes up to a pressure switch. The pressure switch is either a mechanical switch or it is a switch that works on ohm's resistance and tells the circuit board the amount of water in the machine. Common faults that can occur if you look closely at the bottom of this, I can see some sludge lying in the bottom. If sludge built up heavily inside the chamber, this would be giving a false reading to the pressure switch, therefore telling the machine incorrect water levels. Another fault that can occur is if you use too much soap in your wash, the machine may throw an error up, saying uh, too much suds in the machine or too much foam. This can also give the circuit board false indications of the water level, and sometimes an error code will come up. On this Miele washing machine, the pressure switch is built into the circuit board. This means if the pressure switch fails, you have to replace the whole circuit board. On a lot of other washing machines, this pressure switch is a separate component, which is replaceable. Also to note, if the washing machine does not fill in the allocated period of time, it would also cause an error. 
This can be caused for many reasons. One, inadequate flow of water going to the machine, which means it's unable to fill in the allocated period of time. You may even have a water valve like you have here, and if you look in the back of it, you can see lots of bits of crud lying in the back of the filter, and this filter can be pulled out to be cleaned. This would also mean the machine was unable to fill in the allocated period of time, therefore causing an error. OK, here you can see the pressure switch built into the actual circuit board. I don't quite like this personally because if the pressure switch became faulty on this board, it would be a very expensive repair. This circuit board can be over £300 programmed. A couple of other little faults that can occur with washing machines overfilling. Uh, the water valve may be jammed with some dirt, meaning it's leaking into the machine overnight and the drum is filling even when the machine is turned off. Another fault that can occur, this pipe sometimes because it's resting against the cabinet can chaff, meaning it's losing pressure. It's like a tire deflating. You keep having to put more water in to keep the pressure up, therefore the machine overfills. Now your washing machine has filled to the correct level and it has started the wash cycle, normally rotating in a clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation at a set RPM that the program requires. The heating system will be engaged. The element will come on and start to raise the temperature of the water. The NTC sensor will be telling the program what temperature it is at. Now for let me explain quickly how the NTC sensor works. At 25 degrees, the NTC sensor may have a set resistance value of, say, 4,800. As the temperature gets to 30 to 40 to 45 degrees, the resistance value will change. Therefore, at different temperatures, the circuit board knows what resistance it should be receiving and therefore turning a relay on and off on the circuit board which allows the power to come to the heating element. If you have a faulty sensor, you may have F1, F2 error codes appearing on your machine. If the element is open circuit, this would be another error code saying unable to reach temperature in the required time period. All of these are on the error code spreadsheet which is in the description below. There are multiple different error codes that can occur and they're only pointing you in the right direction to fault find on your machine. Now that we've dealt with the filling cycle and the heating cycle, I'm quickly going to go over the motor action. The motor has to do multiple jobs during the cycle. It may be on a main wash and the rotations that are required in a clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation may only be 33 RPM but you may have set the program onto delicates, which will be a different wash action. This may have a different RPM count, maybe 22 RPM, and a softer motion. This is all controlled via the circuit board. The circuit board sends power to the motor. Whether it's a brush motor or an induction motor, the principle is the same. This motor is a brush motor, and one of the common faults that can occur on this machine is an F56 error code. This is motor related, and it's basically saying in the error codes that it doesn't reach 400 RPM on a spin cycle when it should be reaching a higher RPM. This only points you in the direction of the fault. There is a tachometer built into the back of the motor which counts the revolutions of the motor in a clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation. This information then is sent to the circuit board. The circuit board has relays normally on the circuit board, which then decide in which rotation it is going. It will increase the power to the motor as a higher RPM is required. And this is what controls the basic motor functions. There are other videos at the website more in depth with regards brush motor and induction motors if you would like to learn about them. Also, when it comes to the actual rinse cycle and also the spin cycle, the machine will not allow the motor to increase above a certain RPM unless there is a certain level of water in the machine. In other words, the machine will never go into a spin action when it's full of water. So until it's reduced the water in the machine, it will not allow the machine to go over a certain RPM. 
Now that we've dealt with the three major cycles on the machine, filling, washing and heating, we'll deal with the rinse cycle and spin cycle emptying. The emptying system works on the principle that the pressure switch knows and tells the program what water level is in the machine. This then sends power through to the pump, which is normally a 240 volt supply. Depending on where you are in the world, it may be 220 and in America it's 120. The pump is then activated. The water from the drum comes through the sump hose into the pump where an impeller turns the actual water round and this creates a pressure which allows the water to exit through the exit pipe on the pump then goes back to a chamber at the back of the machine with an anti-siphon device on this machine. On some washing machines it's straight through the waste hose and out into the drainage. Let me give you some of the most common faults that can occur. Firstly, if you have children the baby socks and small items of clothing, sometimes if the machine is overloaded, can actually get past the lip on the drum and enter the sump hose. In the sump hose, you have an anti-siphon ball for the filling process. In other words, the ball floats and shuts off the actual drum compartment to keep the soap powder in there. This pipe can get blocked and reduce the amount of water able to enter the pump. Therefore, the machine is unable to empty in the allocated time and may produce an error code. The pump itself has an impeller and a filter system. If this gets blocked, this would also cause the same problem. Pumps can be tested on the bench to make sure that the impeller turns freely. You can also use a screwdriver to make sure the pump is rotating. They sometimes have a magnetic feel to them, and this is because of the design of the pump. They're a magnetic type pump motor. From here, the water then goes through to the container that I said, which we'll have a look at in a second, and then goes into your drainage system. Water can also be restricted on the drainage system, especially if it's fitted to a sink unit. Maybe on a Sunday you have a Sunday roast and pour fat down the drain. When this hot fat hits cold water, it can cause restrictions in your drainage unit. Therefore, the machine is pumping against the wall and is unable to empty in the allocated period of time. All these error codes related to the washing machine not emptying the water in the allocated period of cycle are pointing you in the direction to check the circuit. It is very easy to test and it's very common for a lot of coins and bits and pieces to get into the pump jamming the impeller. This is one of the most common problems on washing machines. People leaving coins, screws, all sorts of things in their pocket. Over the years, I've had many a beer paid for by what I pull out of a washing machine pump or some pose. A washing machine may only have two or three minutes allowed for it to empty the water from the machine. If it has not emptied the water in the allocated period of time, an error may come up. So if there is a restriction coming from the pump, going up to the anti-siphon container at the back of the machine, or you have a problem in the waste pipe or the waste fittings on the machine, and the machine is unable to empty the water in the allocated period of time, meaning that the pressure switch has told the program it is now empty of water, then an error will come up on your system. So if you do have a pump-related error code coming up, it is worth going through the whole procedure on the machine of clearing everything out and making sure you remove any debris from the pump, the sump hose, or any other tubes coming off the pump going to the waste fitting. Before I go into the construction on the machine, I just wanted to make you aware of a common error code that can occur. 138 or F138 is the anti-flood device is activated. I'll explain how this works in a second. On some machines you may have two flashing lights, one on the inlet and one on the drainage, flashing very fast, meaning the machine will not start or go into a program because the anti-flood device has been activated. This is a piece of polystyrene which attaches by a lever to a switch and if the water level in the base of the machine ever exceeds a couple of millimetre this switch is activated and the machine is put into a safety system mode and then will show an error code.
This is normally to do with a leak on the machine and you would need to take the side panels off the machine to ascertain where the leak is coming from and then rectify the problem. Now that we've dealt with all the major functions on the machine, apart from looking at the circuit board and the drum assembly, I thought I'd quickly talk you through the suspension unit. On this washing machine, we have three shock absorbers, two on one side, one on the other. We also have four springs supporting the weight of the drum to the chassis. This is all designed to keep the drum reasonably central while doing rinses and spins and wash cycles. If any of these suspension legs become worn or a spring snaps, it will cause the machine to shake violently. This may be causing an error of an imbalanced load. Imbalanced loads are normally caused by the drum being loaded incorrectly. This means that you do not have a balanced load throughout the machine. Normally caused by towels when doing a couple of towels with other clothing, the weight of the towels on one side of the drum causes it to spin very badly and this can cause the machine to shake. On some models of machines you do have sensors that detect this and will come up with an imbalanced load error code. OK, let me talk you through the actual basic construction of the machine. As you'll notice on the front of the machine here, you have counterweights. Now these are actually cast counterweights. Sometimes they're concrete encapsulated in pl plastic and on other occasions they're just bare concrete, depending on the manufacturer of the machine. Miele have a very high standard in build and their machines are very well constructed and especially the ease of access on this machine to work on it. But one of the problems that you have when dealing with these high-end machines is the components are very expensive. On a lot of cheaper washing machines nowadays, the drums are unaccessible for you to change the bearings because they have built-in obsolescence built into them, meaning the drum is sealed and you have no way of accessing the bearings, seal or spider on the machine. This machine is actually accessible, but the problem being is the cost of the components to repair this machine is just uneconomical to repair, because the machine only costs six, seven hundred pounds, but the components for replacing the spider and bearings which are gone on this machine just make it uneconomical to repair. The actual drum is connected via a spider which attaches at the three points on the drum. This is then connected to a shaft. The spider is normally made out of an aluminium or some type of material including aluminium. This is connected to a steel shaft which then goes through the first seal and then two bearings being connected at the rear to a pulley wheel which is then attached to the belt and down to the motor and the motor can rotate in either direction and this is why your drum rotates in either direction. But as you can see on this machine, the bearings and the spider have completely gone. Now the cost of the components on this machine are over £260 to me as trade. So it makes it uneconomical for the customer to actually repair the machine. So although the machine is accessible, this built-in obsolescence is still there. It's just a crazy life we're living at the moment, producing washing machines that only last seven, eight years, even on the high-end market, and have now made it unaffordable to repair. Okay, let me quickly explain the electrical circuit boards system. You have mains power coming into a suppressor or filter. Uh, these are basically designed to, not to interfere with other appliances like the radio or television in the household. Uh, that sends clean electricity to the circuit board, where the circuit board then sends the power to individual devices. All these connections at the top will be individual components. I believe that is the motor. That goes off to the water valves and also the uh, switching system for the water. That also goes through to the water valve direction. Uh, I haven't got the schematics on this to actually tell you every individual component. We have the bit I don't like, which is the pressure switch built into the circuit board. We have multiple relays on the circuit board, which will turn devices on and off, like the turning the heater on will be a high ampage relay because uh, the heater will be drawing nine amps. Uh, but you may have 
have a low ampage relay for something like the water valve or pump. Uh, this is just to switch the actual pump on. None of the low ampage relays really ever fail. It's always the high ampage relays that fail predominantly on most washing machines. And down the bottom here, we've got the EEPROM. Now, some circuit boards are sold unprogrammed. This means that an engineer will have a laptop or a disc which he basically connects to the circuit board that loads the washing machine program onto the circuit board because this circuit board may be used in multiple different types of machine. On the back of the board here, you've got a couple of triax. I believe both of them are triax, except this one's a very large one. Uh, this goes onto the heat sink plate, which is designed to dissipate the heat from these triax. Um, this then is connected to the control board or the display board at the front of the machine. The display board really is just a set of buttons connected to a circuit board, which when you press the buttons tells the circuit board what wash cycle it should be on and what spin speed and how many rinses and so on. And as I said, the circuit board has got an EEPROM and this has all the wash functionality programmed into it. So this board may be used on several different types of machine but programmed differently. Um, it looks very well constructed but the big problem with all these high-end machines I know for a fact that this circuit board is in excess of £300 of a trade and therefore would make the machine uneconomical to repair if it blew. And it couldn't blow for many reasons. You may have worn carbon brushes to an extent where it's arcing inside the motor and this could blow a component on the circuit board. You may get a heater fail and that can blow a circuit on the control board. There are many reasons control boards go, but in general, I would say this is good quality. Uh, I haven't seen too many problems with the control boards over the years. Uh, normally with Miele washing machines, it is due to the fact that it's, something has gone wrong with the machine, making it uneconomical to repair. And you must remember the call-out charges nowadays with the labour and also the cost of the components. When you can go and buy a brand new Miele washing machine at an entry price of, in, say, £650, if the repair was two, three hundred pounds what would you do? You'd go and replace the machine. And I understand why, but I do not understand the built-in obsolescence because I can guarantee this board construction cost costs no more than £40, £50 to build. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. There's a link in the description below to all the error codes with Miele washing machines with also some useful videos explaining what fault relates to what component and how to go about replacing the component or repairing the machine. You can find this at the website and there's another video coming out with the whole dismantling of the machine explaining each individual component as I take it off. And all the parts that are good on this machine will be available at the website. Thanks very much indeed for watching and if we really helped you, you can always help the website by clicking on the Buy Paula Beer page to donate to supporting the website. Thanks very much indeed for watching.